Good evening. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to another Fever 20 career mode video. Today we are talking about the things you should do in Fever 20 career mode. I did make a video about the things you shouldn't do. That was about a month ago. But now we return today with the opposite and we're going to be talking about the things you should do. Hopefully this helps a few of you guys out that are playing career mode at the moment. Now if you do enjoy the video, please leave a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. And if you are new to the channel and you want to see career mode content, Fever 20 news and updates, make sure you subscribe today. So you don't miss anything. So let's start with the first one. Don't be an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the press conferences. We all know that Solskjaer in real life, when the team gets smashed, he says those positive responses. It's like he's playing career mode, trying to give those positive responses to boost the squad morale. When you're in career mode, be honest as well. Don't go in as an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer saying positive things just to exploit the system, boost your squad morale all the way up. I know that's the aim of the game, but still, I think if you are more honest and, you know, when the team gets a bad result and you say it in the press conference, you pick those negative responses, it's going to give you a more realistic outcome in terms of the squad morale as well. And, you know, you're not sort of rigging the system. I think this year it's a bit too easy to exploit the system, boost your morale up very, very high. And I can understand why people do it, but I like to be more realistic, more honest. When I'm feeling upset in real life, I give those negative responses. And I think you'll enjoy it more if you are more honest in the press conference system. Next up is sort of similar to the first one. Be honest in player conversations as well. This is another way to exploit the morale system. Give positive responses, your morale goes all the way up. But if you're getting rid of a player that was crap like a Sanchez or a Smalling, even though Smalling's doing very well now, let's say Phil Jones. If you're getting rid of Phil Jones, he comes up to you, I'm very upset that you put me on the transfer list. Just say, mate, you're not good enough. And you click that response instead of saying, you know, it's a shame that we couldn't get along and stuff like that. Just be ruthless in the player conversations. Be honest. And I think you'll have a better time as well being more honest. And it'll give you more of a challenge with the morale system rather than just exploiting it and getting a very high morale. Now, this is probably the best advice I can give you. Make sure you plan for that fixture pileup. What do I mean by that? There's nothing better than playing career mode, challenging for all the titles and competitions. And then suddenly your fixture pileup begins and you've got back-to-back -back games and your squad is completely deflated, they've got no energy, and you've got no players to put on because the only players that you've got left are those 60 rated players, and when you're trying to win the league, the 60 rated players can't do it for you. So, what you need to do, and this is what I usually do, at the start of the season, I always bring in a couple backup players that I know that I can put on, and they will still do the job for me rather than trusting those 50 overall youth players. And most of the time, they do the job for me because I can still pick up points when I need to rest some main guys because they've been overplayed and stuff. But... You know, it's going to hit everyone, so you have to prepare. I know there's some teams that don't have Europa League games or Champions League games, so you don't really have to worry about those teams that only play once or twice a week. But if you are in all the competitions, you're going to get hit with that fixture congestion. It is inevitable, and I wish EA would fix it because it's very unrealistic to have back-to-back -back games. We just have to battle with it until it gets fixed, man. I don't know if it's ever going to get fixed, but you need to be prepared, man. That's the best advice I can give you because sometimes it can ruin your season. There's so many times where I'm doing really well in the season, then the fixtures pile up, and then I start dropping points, and then the other teams start catching up, and I, I lose competitions as well. Now, whenever possible, make sure you scout the players before you sign them. There's so many times in my career modes where I don't scout the player, and I think I know their values and stuff, and then I overpay so much that it's pretty embarrassing. I give them very high wages, and I give them a big transfer fee because I wasn't even sure on their values and stuff. So it's a big mistake. It's a rookie mistake, and I should know better. But there is two types of scouting. There's so FIFA scouting, where you go on the website, you type in their name, and then you know all their stats. But there's also the in-game scouting, where you send your scout out, and then they give you the results after a certain amount of days. Now, for some circumstances, that is a pretty bad scenario because let's say you're in the last three or two days of the transfer window, and you're going in for a player that's unknown, and you send your scout out, he's not going to come back in time and tell you the results of the scout. So sometimes you are required to go on so FIFA, but I think the best way to do it is early on, make sure you identify your key targets and scout them early so you have enough days to get the results back. But I know a lot of people use so FIFA and stuff anyway, but yeah, make sure you scout the players before you sign them, whichever way you want to do it so you don't overpay and then you can save as much money as possible, and you know how good the player is for your team, rather than just going into it blindly, and then you realize he's not that good. Another important thing in career mode that you need to do is actually train your players. Don't ignore the training system, because it is one of those growth hacks that really boosts up your players very quickly. Now, if you train those players that have like the little symbol, the rising symbol, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a rising star symbol, you can pick those players, put them in the system, and they're going to grow very quickly, and they're going to turn out to be very good players if you train them over 
a season or two and and just be consistent with it every week simulate the drills if you can't be bothered doing the actual drills i don't know anyone that does the actual drills but simulate the drills and uh, make sure they're just going through the training because it is a very easy way to boost up those stats rather than waiting for the game to do it by itself without the training so yeah one of the best bits of advice i can give you is put your best young players through the training system each week now this one is another good bit of advice. Make sure you play those cup games and I'll tell you why. Do not simulate cup games because you have a very high chance of losing, especially if you are the away team. There's many times where you are like a Premier League side, you verse a League 1 or League 2 team in the FA Cup or something or the Carabao Cup. You simulate the game because you think it's going to be an easy win. You put out your best team thinking that there's going to be no problem. You simulate the game and then you lose 1-0. And you get knocked out of the cup. It's one of the most frustrating things. I'll also give you an example of a full team of icons losing to Grimsby in the cup through the simulation. Surely we should win like 10-0 with this squad. Surely. How did we lose? What? How does a team full of icons, 92, 94 overall players, lose to Grimsby? So I am telling you today, make sure you play those cup games because if you simulate, you too will be a victim of this rigged simulation with the cup games. Now this one is also a useful tip as well. Make sure you check out the EA catalog because it does have a few good things for career mode players. So basically you have to go to your dashboard on career mode, press the R3 on your controller and it will bring you to this EA catalog. This is where you can purchase a few different things for your game in regards to you know using your fee for credits. It's not using actual money. It's just your points that you rack up by playing the game. So I've got about 255,000 on this account and I'm about level 70 or level 80. I don't really know, but I think I've unlocked most of the things. And pretty much, uh, look at this. You've got manager career focus training. You can do scout a future star where they will send you like a wonder kit or something. There's also international manager offer. So if you want to receive an offer to manage your national team at the start of the season, you will get that if you unlock it. Financial takeover is also useful. You will have a billionaire owner that comes into the club and injects a lot of money into your club in case you're struggling for cash. And I think that's about it in terms of career mode stuff. The problem with this though, and I don't really like it, is that once you've used it once, it disappears forever. So you can't use it on the same account anymore. I think that's a bit dumb. I think you should have unlimited goes at it, especially considering we have eight save slots in career mode now, and there's only like four financial takeovers you can unlock in the catalog. So I don't know why they expire, it's a bit stupid. And that's what really holds me back from actually using them because, you know, I would love to use them, but the fact that they actually disappear after you use them makes me like refrain from doing it. In terms of actually unlocking some balls, you can do that as well. So if you want nice yellow balls, you can do that. If you want Premier League balls, winter balls, Adidas balls, whatever you want, they've got it. So let's move on because we don't want to talk about balls for too long. And then we have seasons, extra matches, that's all the ultimate team stuff. And there's also boots as well that you can unlock for your players. So make sure you check out the EA catalog. Don't ignore it. I'm pretty guilty of this. I haven't even unlocked half of the stuff here. But, you know, for those people that want to play with the latest stuff, it's all in the catalog. And you can also get some career mode stuff as well for the game. This year they added in the manager customization. So this tip is related to that. Make sure you change up your manager look every now and then. Don't give him the same suit for the whole season. When you're in the winter months, maybe give him a sweater or something to make him look like uh, he's trying to warm up a bit like that. That looks pretty cool. And then when you're in maybe warmer months, make sure you change his outfit again. Maybe give him a suit. You can even put a track suit on him as well. Just change it up every now and then so you don't get bored visually of looking at the same thing over and over again. It will just help freshen the things up. Now I'm sure a lot of people are like me and actually skip preseason. They don't actually play the games because they can't be bothered. But my advice is don't actually skip preseason. At least accept the tournament and simulate the games because it is the easiest money you can make. Sometimes if you're a good team, you can actually win the competition by simulating and you can collect an extra 10 million to use for your transfers. So the best advice I can give you is accept an offer and then do the preseason by simulating all the games if you can't be bothered actually playing it. And then you might collect a couple million even if you don't make it to the final, even if you don't win it. So it's easy money. Make sure you accept the preseason tournament and don't ignore it completely. Sometimes the easiest way to get world-class talent in career mode is through pre-contracts. So my advice is to be aware of pre-contract situations every January transfer window, but don't abuse it because you can rack up a full team of like world-class talent through the pre-contracts and it's not really a challenge after. I think EA has made it a bit too easy to abuse this system because a lot of world-class talent don't actually 
uh, renegotiate their contracts in the game, which means they become available for free transfers. So, of course, people are going to take the offers when they can get them every January because sometimes you can absolutely snatch a bargain. And if you are one of those League 2 teams or League 1 teams, you might acquire some world-class talent through this system as well if you're lucky. So, it is a good way to get some world-class talent for free. But I think EA has made it a bit too easy for us. Now I'm not really a guy that uses the youth system because I like to play with actual real players. Plus my saves don't really go longer than 4 or 5 years so most of the youth team is really redundant for me. But still a lot of people like to use their youth academy to find those hidden gems that have 94 potential or something like that. And uh, yeah, you can find some great players, great youngsters that you can put into your team and grow them over a couple of seasons and they will become absolute beasts for your team. And financially, it is a good decision to actually sign some youth players because if you grow them and they're worth maybe 60 to 70 million or something, you're going to make massive profits the better they are. Now, if you're looking for the best career mode experience, make sure you play it on PC. The Xbox and PlayStation are good, but you are relying on EA to bring out new features every year and you can't really expand the game mode from the base, from what EA sells you on the disc. But with the PC version, you can actually install mods that bring in new features every week. The Realism mod is a great one. There's also graphics packs as well that people make and there's also face packs as well that you can install and it feels like a completely different game than the console edition over time. So the best experience is on PC, but obviously it does cost money to have a good PC. And I know a lot of people play with their friends on consoles and stuff, so it's not really a feasible uh, decision to actually play on PC for most people. But still, if you are a career mode player primarily, it is a better experience on the PC. So this one should be common knowledge, but make sure you sign players that are young and high potential. How do you know if they're high potential? I think they have potential to be special traits, or you can go through the different scouting route and use so FIFA to check out high potential players. And of course you should avoid signing players that are 30 years old or over because they just go down in overall and they become useless after a few seasons. So make sure you avoid the old guys but make sure you sign the young players that have high potentials. Now if you're a player that likes to have the latest faces in the game in your career modes make sure you wait for the November updates that are coming out in the next few weeks. I think there's also a December one last year we had an early December one as well so my suggestion is just wait until December before you start a long-term crew mode save if you are into the player faces stuff and you want a crew mode that has all the latest faces because currently the way crew mode works is once you start one you can't have the new faces in the game and that's a bit of a shame it's a bit annoying as well but because I do Premier League crew modes I want the latest faces for the promoter teams and stuff so this year I've decided to actually wait before I do a proper long-term save to get all the new faces in in November and then I'll be gone for the rest of the year with career mode. So yeah, it's a it's a tough wait, but for career mode players, I think the best time to actually play the game is in December once all the faces have been installed. But that's only if you really care about the face updates anyway. Now this one is also a useful tip and I think a lot of people know it anyway, but if you're the type of person that doesn't want to manage an international team but gets annoyed by the actual offers that come in through the emails, there is a setting that you can change that blocks all the international management offers in the game mode. So make sure you toggle that switch and you won't get bombarded with those spam emails from India and from like other nations trying to ask you to coach after two weeks of playing in career mode. So yeah, that's a useful tip there. But anyway, that's all for this episode. I hope you did learn a thing or two about career mode. And uh, if you did enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up. But if you need something else to watch, make sure you hit the card in the middle. It'll take you to another FIFA 20 video of mine. I'll see you next time.